Okay. All right. So our first set of notes is the um, is from nine three the food distribution and trade section. Um, so just some some kind of facts and definitions off of this world trade in agricultural products was valued at 604 billion in 2004 and um i don't know if let me see real quick if there's a um all right uh World Trade in Agriculture Products. Current value. So it says, um, here you go. Global global agricultural exports have exceeded 1.8 trillion in 2018. So, um, so that's like that's tri it says tripled um, since 1995. Um, okay, so well, it's, it's definitely tripled since 2004. So 1.8 trillion. Um, they're estimating at. So, I mean, if you think about like the amount, and, and like I mentioned the other day, um, actually, let me pull that up and let's see if we can find a number for that one really quick too. The, uh, oops, current. So United States, um, so so this is a little different than the other number. Like it, like we're not we're not over half of. I don't think we're over half of the agricultural. Um, but so I think this is like a GDP. This is gross. Um, so but one one point one trillion because um, it says ag related industries. So, um, let's, I wonder if I can, let's see, right, of agricultural exports. The export number is different. Here you go. Uh, so, it looks like in 2019, the, the U United States agricultural exports was 100, $137 billion. So you can see, um, you can see that still, I mean, that's a significant amount of, of our, um, ex that's, uh, it should be the highest, um, valued thing that we export. So, um, okay. So agriculture is not only vital to our survival, um, but it's big business too. Um, there's a lot of, uh, value, you know, locked up in that from, um, you know, to, from the actual crops and animals and stuff to the services, um, to, uh, um, like technology and tools and, and machinery and all kinds of stuff, right? There's, there's a lot of money, um, wrapped up in that as well so all right food security the two term food security means this there's really two parts to it it's access for every person to enough nutritious food so like basically having access to enough food and not only enough food but enough nutritious food to sustain an active and healthy lifestyle so there's two parts. It's like having the access to the food, 
and having the food that they have access to be healthy and nutritious enough to maintain a healthy and active lifestyle. Okay, some people have one, some people have one of those, like some people have enough access to food to keep to stay alive, but, but it's not, um, it's not nutritious enough to maintain a healthy lifestyle or stuff like that. So, okay, then they talk about levels of responsibility for food security. So in other words, as a society, as a, as a global community, as a society, um, you know, as a, as a country, as a state, all this kind of stuff, we have responsibility to make sure that our members um, have opportunity to have enough, to have food security, basically, to have enough healthy, nutritious food to, to stay alive. Okay. Now, it, notice how I said providing the opportunity for, right? I didn't say necessarily providing the food. Okay, because different levels have diff um, different levels of of I don't know what you want to say government or or whatever have um, because not it's not just government but like different levels have different responsibilities in that. Okay, but it but everybody has parts to play in, in ensuring that everybody has the opportunity to, to access that. So um, globally, so globally would be like countries. Um, with uh in relationship to each other not not within themselves globally would be as a global community what kind of responsibility do we have so the goal is sustainable food and nutrition for all countries sustainable meaning the ability to continue producing the food and whatever right um so what are some of the uh, responsibilities at a global level that like countries have to each other as, or to the global community. Um, food aid for famine relief, aid in technology and sustainable agricultural practices. We've talked a little bit about that already, right? Um, some of the big ones even can be like, uh, like irrigation techniques and, um, you know, methods of, of farming the soil that help uh, maintain soil uh, value like nutrients and stuff like that in the soil, things along those lines. Um, debt relief. Why do you guys think debt relief is in there? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, um, it's one of those things where, uh, where you're, when you're in a, when you're in a hole economically, like, that just make, it just makes everything hard, right? Like even doing the simple things to sustain yourself as a country. So um, countries that are in severe uh, amounts of debt um, typically have uh, difficulty then just maintaining things like food security for their for their members. Um, fair trade. Anybody know what fair trade refers to, or the concept of it, or why it's important? Yeah, that's what, getting like a getting like a value, getting like the proper amount of value out of the goods that you're buying and selling. Yeah, good. Do you have anything else? Uh, like, hey, uh, like we trade like crops or something mm -hmm. really, so they give us back oil and that we don't have really the geography to make oil like that, so we can go somewhere else to get it, and they don't really have the best agriculture over there, so we help them out. Like, yeah, good. So, so, um, so also the concept of like, like everybody needs certain resources to, to survive and, and thrive, but obviously based on where in the world we, you know, the country is, they might not have access to certain things. So um, providing fair and equitable trades within that kind of stuff. And then like Rain was saying too, is like making sure that when you either export or import or whatever, you're, you're buying and trading and selling or buying and selling and trading goods, that it, there's a fair value attached to those. Um, and this goes into some of the stuff we've already discussed, like the idea of, you know, poor countries maybe being taken advantage of by uh, richer countries because their options are more limited um, or they're or literally their people will work for small, you know, for, you know, they don't have, um, say, you know, they don't have minimum wage laws or stuff like that. or They don't have child labor laws or stuff like that, like like not allowing that to um, 
sort of not allowing that to propagate um, because that creates issues within the country. Um, and actually, you'll see now, uh, it's, it's mainly in food is the main place you'll see it. Um, but one of the things you'll see are uh, um, is you will see marks on on items that are that have been like sort of certified uh like certified fair trade um coffee is a big one um so uh, hold on let me see if i can i was trying to yeah um oof, okay Oh, here we go. Here's some of the, so you'll see different like labels, um, different labels certified by different groups. Um, and I think actually, I think fair trade is, I think fair trade, this specific group might be a specific, like might be a specific group, but um, yeah, you'll see like symbols like, uh, and basically it's a certification. Um, they go through like a cert certification process. There we go. That um, that certifies that the people that are selling them are are getting a fair uh, a fair you know value for them, where they're able to then pay their workers fair uh, you know fair value, um, you know fair working salaries and and enough to to really live uh, live well off of. So um, that's become a uh, a pretty decently sized growing uh initiative and, and thing so and you can see even when i was just looking up fair trade um i mean you can see different products there you know and you can see off of this how uh some of the more common ones um oh well, now it's not but like there was coffee and um chocolate and stuff like that that are uh, from other countries that are that are fair trade labels. So it looks like there are some clothing too. I'm not as familiar with that. Um, so clothing brands and stuff that um, that would carry fair trade seals. Uh, you know, so because um, that also includes like worker conditions and all that kind of stuff into it. Um, incorporates a lot of that. So. Uh, so, but as a, as a, so what they're talking about here is like, that's kind of a, a global responsibility because it, because that deals with trade between countries, right? So that makes sense that it's at the global level of it's, it's countries responsibilities between each other to maintain a, a fair balance of that. Um, disarmament, reducing or eliminating weapons, uh, nuclear anti, anti, uh, I can't say that, hold on, anti-proliferation packs. In other words, getting rid of like nuclear weapons, stuff like that. Um, why do you think that would have anything to do with food security? Like com like conflict, combat, or stuff like that. Okay, so yeah, one of one of the things is whenever there is conflict, um, like a lot of other things, um, really wars, conflicts, stuff like that. Um, yeah, they're about, about fighting and force type of, but it really what that, what it is, is it's a, um, it's a resources thing. Like it's, it's, um, it's a battle of whoever's like the most efficient and the best, the best, uh, um, sort of prepared and, and resources and stuff like that. Like one of the reasons that Germany was so successful at the beginning of world war II and taking over stuff is because they were like they were crazy efficient so they had resources and they were super efficient about uh getting the resources where they needed to be and all that kind of stuff and things along those and one of, if, if you remember from history too one of the problems that united states have when we jumped into the the battle is is we're over here in north america most of the fighting was i mean outside of like obviously pearl harbor and stuff but most of the fighting was occurring over in europe and um like Europe and, and some over in Asia and stuff. But so, yeah, we have, 
resources, anything like that, but like, how do you get them to, you know, to be to a place where they can be useful and stuff? Well, so, um, you know, a lot of like, so a lot of war is managing resources and controlling. And also if you can destroy the opposing side's resources and ability to do stuff, you really limit them. Right. Um, I mean, heck, look at, look at right down south of us. We have a, a whole uh, state park that basically deals with that, right? Starved Rock. What do they do? One Indian tribe trapped another Indian tribe up there and starved them to death. They just, you know, prevented them from getting food. Um, so, uh, so wars and conflict and stuff definitely, um, definitely endangers food safety. Um, also along those lines too, if, 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 uh, country is is going through conflict um and it's actually physically in the country then you you know you don't have people growing crops and and being able to transport food and stuff everything is usually a lot all of your resources usually funneled right into the the conflict itself as well right so um and then as as it goes back and forth again like i said people do things like they'll uh burn fields or um you know when uh, I don't know if you guys remember like any of the ancient Greece history or whatever, but when um, the, who was it? Was it the, I think it was the Persians when they went through Carthage or something, or was it the Carthaginians when they went through Greece or whatever, but they like salted the, they salted the, um, the farmland and stuff literally would take salt and, and dump salt all over the, the croplands and stuff because it would um, essentially, basically they knew they couldn't hold that land like they didn't have the forces to to hold it and keep it so they basically destroyed the land so the the um i don't know if, like i said i don't know if it was, if it was greeks or Carthin or carthaginians or whoever it was um but the, so that when the invading force like went through and left they couldn't use it so it destroyed their ability to have resources and stuff like that um so yeah. Yes. And it also with Stalingrad too, with the German contractor after they tried to take it all over. Yeah, yeah, that's another good example. They got they basically stalled out when they you know, food resources along with other things, but yeah, that's another great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um so yeah, so that's why that's why that uh you know that kind of stuff is is considered there. Um, and then the last one on the global level is family planning assistance, uh, just kind of basic, you know, uh, cause that deals with population, which then impacts your food security and stuff. Okay. On the country level. So this is, this is a country's responsibility to its citizens. Okay. So a country's responsibility to its citizens within its, within its borders or whatever. Um, regulation of trade and commerce within the country so that again kind of just makes sense like um you know making sure that those regulations like food can get to all different places and stuff like that safety and quality assurance so in the united states who's in control of safety and quality assurance for our food uh supply yeah good the fda right food and drug administration so so they're the ones that are in charge of of um there's a lot of overview. It's, it's, if any of the, you know, you've seen, you see every once in a while, like salmonella or stuff coming out of a, you know, cases of that in, in restaurants or stuff. So the FDA is the ones who exam, um, who, uh, not examines, um, like looks into that, um, investigates, but yeah, it investigates all those kind of things. Um, they're the, also the ones that, uh, are like basically enforce, um, safety and and cleanliness at, at any kind of food processing facilities and stuff like that they deal with like the labeling of food and um like re food labeling requirements and all that kind of stuff. So, so they actually um they actually have a lot that they're they, they kind of oversee or whatever which makes it sort of depressing in a way that, that a lot of the fda funding has been cut over the past you know 30 40 years um, because of their importance to our food supply. So, um, 
just or fair land distribution. We talked a little bit about that with some of like the, you know, South, uh, South Africa, you know, you know, having, especially in places where a lot of them are farming for themselves and things. Um, avoidance of wars, conflict, same thing. If you're, if your country's in a war, you, that, um, impacts food safety. Uh, so if, if you remember, even when the United States, even though they weren't fighting on our, really fighting on, on our, uh, on our land in World War II and stuff, they still had food ration and stuff, right? Because they were supporting, sending so much food over to the troops and all that kind of stuff. So they were still, um, it still impacted food security, even though there wasn't actually physically fighting in, within our country borders. So um, support sustainable agricultural practices uh, within the country itself and provide social programs as safety nets when needed. So what's a, what's an example of that within the United States? A uh, social program that would be a safety net for food security. So okay, yep, soup kitchens would be would be an example. Good. Say it again. No, that'd be more about like the safety and quality part. Yeah, like the the WIC program, the the link, yeah, the EBT program with the food uh, food stamp thing. Um, you guys are too young to to remember this, but um, way back in the, the reason it's called the food stamp program is way back in the day it literally was like they would get like books of stamps, yeah, and they would and you could you would tear them out and they'd be worth a certain amount of you know worth a certain amount of money that you could buy different kinds of food and stuff. Now it's all on a EBT credit card type deal um, that just gets loaded, but yeah, the food stamp uh, EDT program is a is a big one. Um, uh, within the school, we have uh, free they have free and reduced lunch programs for students that might be experiencing uh, difficulty, you know, families with food security and stuff. So, yeah, those are all good examples. Um, so, and um, not to tangent a ton on this, but just the idea of like. Like those programs are are vital and necessary. Is there, um, you know, do people take advantage of it? Do is there probably you know corruption with it? Yeah, for sure. Um, with any program, you're going to get that, especially on a government level, uh, or I mean on a federal level, for um, even at state level and stuff. But, um, but overall, that is a, it's a beneficial for the society. It's beneficial to have those programs. Um, you know, we talked about. We talked about the the large scale population explosion, right, with the last stuff and and some of the things that that can lead to, um, you know, people struggling, and that's because they're struggling to get basic necessities for survival. Well, food is a basic necessity for survival. So if you have people that are struggling to get it from one way or another, that's going to increase your other social problems. Um, you know, and and I mean, just think about it. You guys have all at some point been really super hungry and not tried to and like been trying to do something. You can't, it's, it's like hard to concentrate. You can't concentrate. If you're really hungry, it's hard to do anything else other than just think about Jesus. I want to eat something, right? Like, like, uh, you know, maybe you ate, ate dinner early the night before and then skip breakfast cause you were in a hurry and you've got sea lunch or something. Right. But I tell you, like, you don't give a crap what's going on in sixth period class. You're just like, Oh my God, I just can't wait till I can eat something like this. <laughs> like, you know, so um, so food security is important, you know, having access to that. So, um, all right. And the last one is on a family level. So what, what is a family responsibility to its members? So typically we think of this as like parents' responsibility to the family in order to provide food security. Um, good health and nutrition, you know, providing uh, not only food in general, but, but nutritious food for, for everyone to stay healthy, um, healthy and active and stuff. Effective family planning. Again, at the family level, you should, you know, it's and sometimes it's not always, doesn't always work, but like people should um, essentially try to limit their family to what they can support and, and provide for, right? Um, access to food in general. That's kind of an, an obvious one, but yeah, you should, you need to provide access to all members of the family, access to food. Employment security. Um, that's because we, Obviously, making money is how we acquire food. So um, having em employment security, knowing you're going to have money to purchase food. 
adequate housing again similar um and then adequate land or livestock again that's like that's not something in the united states that we think about as much because that's really not we're not really an agri uh agricultural agrarian society i mean we do but because of technology and everything that a very small portion of our society isn't is responsible for actually growing or raising that um but like we talked about in other places and other countries that's at the family level just like you know you get agrarian societies that's their responsibility like you got to make sure that you have enough land and, and livestock that to provide food for your family so that's all at the family level okay Right. Any questions or comments about anything from that? Okay. Um, 